you're doing, man. It's awesome. All right, today's update is gonna come from under the Fairmont. So what I'm working on, which is pretty difficult when you don't have all the tools, is finishing where the, or figuring out where the final mounting position of this motor is gonna be. As of now, it's hitting on the K member right here. Somehow it's resting on its own whatever, but um, I can't do anything until I figure out the transmission mount. I ordered one from UPR, it definitely did not fit. I don't know what was going on with it. Maybe I ordered the wrong one, which is very possible. But again, it's Fox Body stuff, so I'll just keep it. I ordered a specific Team Z transmission mount, should be coming in today, that seemed to be offset a bunch, and it looked to mount on the stock mount. Now this is a Fairmont, it is a Fox Body, but it is not a Mustang, so there might be differences in the distance between that mount and, and the center of the stock mounts, which are bent, which I have to bend them back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up the motor, take up all the weight of the motor and the transmission, and make sure that the transmission mount is on perfectly, meaning on the, on the, uh, on the mount, on the uh, stock body mounts, and then everything is, there's no binding. Then I have to come over here and figure out where I'm gonna position the 90 degree brackets that hold the mid plate out. This is the mid plate. This is the guy that bolts in or goes in between the motor and the transmission. So I have to figure out where the 90 degree brackets go after the motor, the transmission mount is in. While all of that is in, I have to make sure nothing is hitting here. So after I mount the trans mount, fit, clearance this a good, I don't know, quarter inch or more because it's going to be solidly mounted then i got to figure out where the 90 degree brackets go then i got to figure out where these guys go these um brackets here so i got to make a bracket so all of that has to happen but not before the transmission is being supported by some kind of mount so i can't really do anything right now i'm waiting on ups right now once ups shows up i'll start mounting everything Clearancing all that shit and re-bending the stock mounts back to where they should be because this one's pretty sandwiched up, see? I'll just put a crescent wrench here, bend it back, and do what I have to do to make it centered, then squeeze it with the mount and the hardware. Hopefully it comes with good hardware. Yes, it's a little sideways. But anyway, that's what I'm working on. That's a lot of work. It's, it's not simple. There's a lot of shit going on. So I'm going to hopefully uh, update you on that in a second. Okay, so apparently the UPR stifflers belt was the correct one. This is why. The final resting position for the transmission was incorrect. Once I took up slack on the motor and the transmission, all I had to do was move it forward. See, my thought process is get it as far back close to the firewall as possible. But unfortunately, the mount did not allow for that. Get back in there. Get back in there. So the mount did not allow for that. So I'm using the stock mount with the Stifler's uh, cross member with their extension situation. This is exactly how it looks on their, um, it looks like, that's how it looks like on their, the picture. Basically they tell you to stack these. The Team Z one is too wide for this mount. It's like double the size. So that's definitely not gonna work. And these are for like SN95 mounts for a 6R80. So this is the 6R80 mount I use for the fair mount. That's not gonna work. But in the future, if I go 6R80, I have the mounts. Now I have turbo 400 mounts and I have a lot of room in the engine bay. So now I have to figure out the 90 degree bracket that goes there and there. But I have to now make sure, upside down, that this guy is not touching anywhere. So I have to keep this guy loose on the slots right here and hope there's enough slack here so I can clearance everything here. Once everything is clearance, keep it in that position, then mount these guys, then <laughs> upside down mount those guys. All right, so what I did was I made some, I'm holding the bracket up just with bolts for now. This will be welded for now. Just made some small holes, use the existing hardware. Actually, this is a 3 8 hardware, uh, grade eight. Um, I learned a lot. On this one, this one's the second pass, so I just need another bolt. It's lined up nicely. The other side, not so much. 
So I uh, kind of did two test holes, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not happy with how it's coming out. But um, <laughs> I could either just leave it or make another hole to have three hold it per side or two hold it per side. Who knows? Um, if I don't need three, I won't make another hole because it's just going to look like Swiss cheese and I'm going to look like turvy. Um, but the plan is, the reason I put the bracket on this way is, you know, I could have put it on a different orientation. I want it to be able to unbolt this and this and slide the motor out. So in theory, um, if I'm removing something, then the motor can just come out that way. If I had the bracket where this side was hitting and then the other side was on the back side of this, I would have had to like, I don't know, drop it or go way above it to clearance it and there's not enough room to go up to clearance it. So I thought, well, let me put the bracket this way so that I can move the motor towards the front of the car and straight up without any restrictions. If I'm wrong on that and you guys think I'm, I fucked up, let me know in the comments. Again, I'm no expert, I'm just learning here. And I was trying to use common sense, but sometimes you can overthink these things. So the chain is still on it. I have tension, but it's not walking anymore. So I'm hoping that when I drop this, the motor doesn't drop at all. So let me, let me keep a close eye here and drop the chain at the same time and see if it drops at all. I'm hoping it holds it up nicely. Eh, came, nah, it came down a little bit. Let me uh, jack it back up. Yeah, it didn't exactly hold it. It's kind of flimsy, but the control, I'm sorry, uh, cross member for the transmission is in. The motor plate is in, just bolted. Now it's time to make these brackets and make sure that I'm not hitting anywhere on the oil pan, which it's pretty damn close, but again, Theoretically, once it's all in and solid, it shouldn't move. I'm gonna try to do my best to get good clearance on there, but we'll see how all that goes. So basically, the plate has to be opened up a little bit so I can hug it and then see about tacking it in place and having enough meat on the backside to grab onto the bolts. So I'm just gonna use whatever tools I have to keep making that hole a little bigger, but not too big that when I weld, it doesn't uh, have, I don't have to like make up huge massive gaps when it comes time to do my amateur welding. So everything is resting on where it kind of should end up. And of course, one of the things I worried about is rearing its ugly head. Where the hell's the turbo gonna go? Like, where, you know, and, you know, um, hindsight being 2020, of course, you, you know, you kind of have control, but you don't. You send a car off and you kind of just say, hey, front tubular. But then you go, where's where's the turbo going to go? Is it going to go like over here? Maybe. I mean, at the end of the day, that might be what has to happen. Some crazy situation where it comes off over here, does some funky bending, and then somehow it makes its way <laughs> up here somewhere. Like, yeah. So it looks like uh, something's going to have to happen or maybe, you know, someone with better eyes and better fabrication skills can look at this and go, yeah, we could totally make it work. But I, I mean, once I got the car back, I said, you know, it doesn't look like, I mean, I have plenty of clearance. I tried to get it back as far as I could, but this is where the uh, trans mount is dictating where it goes. It's as far back as I can put the trans mount. So that's, that's all I can do. Um, I'm not going to do any custom crazy stuff, but yeah, this is funky, very funky. How am I going to do turbo stuff there's like no room unless i get a radiator that's half the size make a custom mount on it or have someone make a custom mount and figure that out yeah it's it's tight which again i looked at it when it got here and i'm like i'm a little concerned with the width i was hoping that everything was you know here but i guess the size of the inner cooler unfortunately dictated everything so yep yeah, uh cross that bridge when we get to it all right for the most part i got um, the mounts fabbed up. This gap isn't going to be great. Um, so I got to see what I'm going to do. If I tack this in place just to have it tacked in place, um, I'll take it to a welder that knows what he's doing and he'll say, Hey, um, thanks for the template. I'll make an actual mount, which again, that's part of the whole process. This is a little better. This is uh, the second version still has a bit of a gap, but again, the whole goal was this was just to kind of get everything mocked up. I'm gonna buy a welder, like a cheap Harbor Freight welder, tack, 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 learn to weld before that, you know, just use some pieces here so I don't make a turvy weld. But then the goal is to blow it all apart, 
Um, actually, you know, probably not. I probably tack it in place and then just ship it off to where um, I'm gonna have a guy fab up turbo stuff. And then after all that's mocked up, then blow it apart, then paint the cage because he's gonna have to do some fire work. He's gonna have to cut. I can cut those. So we'll see. Um, but for now, I'm happy that I'm progressing. So it's, just, you know, giving you guys just a um, heads up on everything and the engine's level. Um, it's a little high, but honestly, that's all I can get away with. I can't get any lower because the mount, the trans mount, dictated where this thing's gonna end up. So this mount gets cut off, so I'll have a ton of room for header stuff. Actually, you know what? That's the next thing I could do. I could see how the headers mount down there. So let me let me see if I can get those headers over here and see what they look like mounted. Okay, so I just uh, loosely mounted the Holly Coyote turbo headers. It's a tight fit, but um, I think I'll be able to use this. It's gonna be mostly up to the fabricator, what he thinks is gonna work, but they're in. So it's gonna be up to the fabrication specialist to see what's what, see what's gonna fit in terms of intercooler, intercooler and all this stuff here. I don't have that much room on piping, which I'm kind of sad about. When you really look at it, this is the room I have for like turbo stuff. But at the end of the day, the turbo can end up there, it can end up there. Hell, it can end up up here, wherever he thinks um, life makes it easy and happy, which I'm okay with. If, I, if he wants to shove the turbo up in the fucking fender, I don't care as long as I can get to it. Intercooler happiness and piping, all of it is going to be up to uh, the fabricator. So I'm just going to take a bunch of photos for him. The same guy who did senior stuff to see if he's willing to play with it and um, I'll update when I can. Alrighty, so now it comes time to tack in those uh, engine mounts, or those engine tabs on the motor plate. So I'm going to get a cheap welder. I'm not looking to weld professionally. I know a lot of you will probably want me to buy the top of the line stuff, but honestly, I'm going to be tack welding or doing very minimal welding in that garage. First of all, I don't have the uh, electricity for it and I don't have the need. I'd rather have like a professional that welds, finish the weld. So all I have to do is tack a couple of things into place so that it stays and then if I have to adjust, I can just break the tack and be good. So I'm gonna go to Harbor Freight. I've done a lot of research, I mean too much research, on small flux welders, very minimal stuff without needing tanks or anything like that. And for tack welding, it's fine on my little home project. So I'm gonna get to Harbor Freight, get me like a little 125 deal get the flux wire, uh, 30 thousandths flux wire, get gloves, helmet, all that stuff. So I'm not looking to spend more than 500 bucks on this because it's a you know, home welder. I'm not looking to be like Billy Badass stuff, but if it works out where I can do most of the stuff with this small welder, uh, you know, I'll take advantage of it. So let me get there, show you what I got, learn a little bit on welding practice, and then tack in all of the plates that I need to tack in so that they're not temporarily bolted in as they are now. All right, so of course went to Harbor Freight, got a helmet, Oh my lord, got the welder, Flux 125. Um, again, I've done a lot of stuff looking up on YouTube and people use this for small home projects and it seems to be more than adequate. And I got the gloves, grinding wheels, the wire, uh, little, um, you know, wire uh, cutters and, what are they, clippers, cutters, clippers, pliers, pliers, grinding wheels, flapper discs, cutting all, cut off wheels all that stuff and then at the front counter they said hey you can grab one of like five things because you're some kind of like premium member and i'm like free forty dollar uh actually twenty dollar ratchet straps so since i've always put motors in and out and use this as like a wobbling mechanism i'm like yeah pick that guy up all right got the welder set up got all the wire fed got all that stuff figured out all i'm gonna do is weld some beads down just to get familiar with it wire speed my speed uh, voltage to see if even this breaker in this garage system even holds up to the amps this thing's gonna draw but if it does then I'm um, gonna make sure that I make some you know straight uh, down just to kind of get familiar with the puddle formation speed and my consistency so I'm gonna practice a lot before I simply tack I know you could just tack it but I don't know I have the opportunity to mess around so why not try got the helmet already set up this was like 120 bucks there, but whatever. I, I, I don't mind spending the money if I'm gonna be doing this. And if I get decent at it over time, there's other things I can, I'm sure, weld down the car. Okay, apologies I didn't record it, but that's the first weld uh, attempt. And my settings are down the middle. 
five on wire speed and E on voltage on a 3 16th plate. And these little bubble things are just the slag from the flux core. It actually felt really smooth. Um, I don't know, it's not terrible, you know, for the first shot. I haven't welded in probably, shit, 10 years, you know? Having, I mean, I'm sorry, maybe six years. I, I dabble because Millwright. But let me um, keep playing around, keep making some um, beads, and if everything looks good, man, I'm just gonna tack those plates on and be a happy cat. Deep stability on the weld is fun to learn, but uh, I'm just gonna make some more beads, try to cat not catch the wood on fire. So that's what it looks like before you um, take the slag off the guy. So that's what it looks like before you take the slag off the guy. And then you're... So the spatter, you can get some anti-spatter spray and stuff, or just flapper wheel it to death, and that's probably what I'm gonna do. So I don't know. Huh? Alex, it's not terrible for flux harbor freight junk. Okay, it might look like a mess, but this is going to be what you guys experience at home. I'm glad I'm able to run a grinder, a fan, and the welder, and it doesn't pop a breaker. Awesome. So, I grinded down some of the stuff, that the, the spatter. I just wanted to test how aggressive this flapper wheel was. A little too aggressive in my opinion, so <laughs> I just said, let me just see what happens if I go on the weld. So, I have to be careful if I do clean around the weld, if I want to maintain the weld look and get the BBs out of it. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start just welding some stuff that's round-ish. You know, just kind of get the get, get the hang of welding stuff that's around so I can get the hang of the, I don't know, the texture and, and I guess maybe the technique. I'll clean this up with the grinder and I'll weld over this just to kind of get that, just to see how it looks uh, and how it feels. So I'll be doing some practicing. I'm not really gonna video most of it because it's just, a, you know, a big arc. That's all you're gonna see. So I'll show you the finished product. Okay, a couple of examples. This guy went really slow on the weld, like super slow. Let it kind of bunch up, let the puddle kind of form. And uh, that's the finished result. This one, I went a little quicker on the on the, uh, the action. Basically, I was moving faster, same wire speed, same everything, so I regulated my movement. So I could probably slow down the wire speed, keep the voltage where it's at, or just, you know, regulate my movement. So one or both. So again, I'll keep trying, keep messing around. Just wanted to show you some stuff. This this was a uh, hilarious because I don't even think this metal is proper. So uh, I guess it doesn't matter the type of metal you use. So I'll keep going around this guy, grinding areas that I want to weld on, just to get radius practice. I, I suggest you do the same thing, man. It's just going to take a lot of practice before you get good at anything. Okay, uh, a bunch of good progress. Um, basically, try different speeds different I don't know um, techniques uh, this one was interesting so this was the first uh, I haven't cleaned off the slag so it looks worse than it is there we go and so these are three different techniques that I tried and it was interesting to kind of see what each of them did on a roundish material so basically this is the first one which I think was perfect Perfect speed, uh, up, perfect technique for me, it felt good. This one I slowed down a little bit and it kind of took material away, but I concentrated on the puddle, so I didn't really stress it. And this one I went just faster, as you can tell, actually um, more of a S pattern, but I really made it slow, so it kind of got fat, but you know, I tried to get as much penetration in there as possible. So I had to like forget about the fact that material was disappearing, but concentrate on the puddle. And this one was a straight line that just didn't work out. So no straight line. 
uh, S pattern, but honestly, the, the default setting is this for me. And this is kind of what um, I feel more comfortable at, this guy right here. So I want to do that. So I think I'm ready to tack. Just tack. I'm, all I'm doing is tacking on the car just to have the mounts on there. And uh, the reason I'm practicing on this is just to kind of gain some knowledge as to what material likes what kind of speed and my overall patience for welding. Right, a little bit more than a tack, but what I did was I just kind of made sure it penetrated well, and then I cleaned up the splatter. Something funky went on back here where the gun stopped mid, mid weld, and I think that gap is too big, so I might have to redo this guy just to make sure it's super flush, so that when I do weld it, it's good. But you know, I, practicing, practicing. That's this side. This side looks okay. I wouldn't really go too crazy on this side. This was the second one, obviously, so I was able to kind of get a sense of how the radius and everything went penetrated pretty nicely backside also shut off mid mid weld so you know just kind of did a little droplet back there but cleaned up this the slag or the splatter a little bit but yeah i mean more than likely gonna redo this one because that gap i think is too wide to overcome if you guys think that gap is not too wide let me know but i think that gap is just too big to overcome with weld unless you guys don't think it is but um you know i can redo this in about 20 minutes so it's not that big of a deal um and i probably want to redo the uh, the bolt situation because it was kind of um wonky the way the bolts kind of went in there so i want to make sure i have enough space to get tighten that gap and have the right bolt pattern and have it centered properly but there you go all that stuff just to just to tack weld a couple things onto the car a lot of practicing but now that i have a welder I can kind of mess around with small home projects, welder, grinder, helmet, and a bunch of tools just to complement the welding. I got a little froggy and decided to weld these plates in fully. Now, I don't mind showing you this boogered up piece of shit, okay? I have no problem showing you this. Why? I was learning the speed, learning the metal, learning the angle. So obviously there was a lot of start stopping here. I'm just going to grind this sucker down, dress it up, make sure that it's penetrated properly and go from there. So once I kind of got the hang of it, these over here were done continuous. Just one long continuous pass. Now this one I think was a little hot, so I turned down the setting and did the top, and that's the, the, the slag or the um, material that covers the weld for protection. But, I mean, I had an easier time. It looks to have decent penetration. So yeah, this was the second attempt, and this was the first attempt, which is globby as hell. But I'm gonna grind it down, dress it up, and if it holds, it holds. At least I can always look back and go, yo, those are my first welds on the car, aside from the tack welds on the front. But I don't mind showing you this because this is me learning with flux stuff, learning the metals, learning the angle and the speed. And this was the continuous bead. I missed a spot here, so I must I might have been a little too fast there or something. After a little wire the... wheel action, you can see that uh yeah, I a couple spots I start, stop, start, stop. So I'll I don't know if I should keep touching that up because I might make it worse. <laughs> I might just touch up the spots just to have a constant bead. But yeah, again, figuring out the speed, globbed up, I'm not ashamed. And then after I learned a little bit, and uh, in my opinion, it looks pretty good for not ever kind of welding at all. Just kind of looking at YouTube videos. These bolt patterns, don't worry about these. These are just temporary. I, I, I finalized the bolt pattern, I just have to make it nice and straight, and it's these guys. That guy kind of just goes away, which <laughs> you can tell, hit and miss a couple of times once I get the mid plate on here. Motor and everything cinched up, I think it'll be good to go. But yeah, there you go. Amateur welding at its finest. Yeah, you know, it's just gonna be a little wrinkle into my skill set so that I can uh, keep chugging on with this project. So the next step is probably redo that plate, get it on tighter, or if you guys think that gap's okay, we'll see. I got the turbo headers on, so it looks like clearancing is not that big of an issue, except maybe on this side. It's probably ready to mock up the turbo kit once I reinstall the radiator, the inner cooler and everything, and bring it up to uh, Lund Racing, and maybe Ryan Eckhart can get to it whenever he gets a chance, because he's gonna be working on Senior's car in a little bit, All right? That's it for the update. Um, a lot of little things here and there, but again, there's a lot of work that goes on in the background, so I can't show you videos all the time. This video probably took two weeks to make just because of the incremental process that I'm going through to get this thing built in my free time. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Talk to you later.